Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Again, we're so excited um, that you're here uh, with us today. It's just an honor. Uh, to, to, to be able to be a part of what God is doing at our church. And God has been doing, you know, many things over this year. God has done so many beautiful things, you know, in our lives. We've seen story after story of God moving. And, but I'm excited, again, to be here, you know, Known Victory Church this, this Sunday morning. And last week, like Beth said, we started the series uh, called The Blank That Stole Christmas. Uh, if you were here last week, we started it. And, you know, Beth and I, we actually preached, preached? spoke together, we, we spoke the message together, preached the message together, and we are talking about the schedule that stole Christmas, right? We were talking about some of the things, like how do we create um, uh, space in our schedules to make sure that this Christmas we're really focusing on the most important thing, which is Jesus, right? Focusing on Jesus, which is the most important thing that we celebrate around Christmas time. And it was, a, it was, it was really fun and, I, and I, really practical, and hopefully, you know, we were able to learn something uh, last week. And, you know, I want to preface our message today by saying that, you know, we are a family. You know, we're, we are a family. We are better together than we are apart. And today it might not be the most exciting message, but we're going to be speaking a message called The Grief That Stole Christmas. I think, you know, around Christmas time, grief becomes really real. You know, as we head into this really exciting, uh, joyful season, there's still parts of us sometimes, especially, you know, year after year, where there's parts of us sometimes missing when it comes to Christmas time. Some of the things, maybe some of the people that used to be around and, you know, we, we've lost them over the past maybe a few years. And it brings a lot of different emotion for so many different people Christmas time and you know, grief is real. You know, grief is challenging. It's hard to walk through loss. And we're not just talking about loss of people, but so many other things that can bring grief, you know, into our lives and into our story. And, you know, grief tends to be a roller coaster. You know, I think we've all had moments where we've experienced grief in our life. And you have moments where you feel like everything you're, everything's okay, you're doing well, and then all of a sudden you're hit in the gut with that, with that thought or that, that feeling that I think we all know that you know something is missing. You know, you're high and then you're low, and this is what grief kind of does in our lives, and this happens especially, again, at key moments. You know, especially when we head into this Christmas season, it's an expensive season, it's a busy season, and grief tends to really become real around these key moments in the year, and you know, Matthew 5, verse 4, some of us, we feel like this is our story, and it's, Matthew 5, 4 says this, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And, and I read that, blessed are those who mourn, it sounds so like an oxymoron, right? How can I be blessed when I'm mourning, when we're experiencing grief, when we're experiencing loss, and how do we feel blessed? And the reality is, is that they for those of us who are mourning, who are grieving, you know, this Christmas season, Jesus came to comfort you. You know, when he, when he came to the manger, he came to comfort us and be there for us and be our savior. And that's what Jesus is about. And we experience this deep comfort when Jesus comes, but we're also simultaneously, and I'm sure you know this, you feel the deep pain of loss, even in the midst of comfort. It's this weird feeling where you feel so broken, yet so loved at the exact same time. If you know the feeling I'm talking about, you feel like everything is gone, but you still feel like there's hope. This is what Jesus brings when he entered our story. When we talk about, you know, grief, and we think about, you know, grief, and oftentimes when we think about it, the, the number one thought we have is obviously when we lose somebody, grief is, is a big part of that. You know, when we lose a loved one. But there's other things that, are, that, that bring grief, and grief really is just connected to loss. So really the loss of anything can cause us to experience grief, right? And so maybe this year you're heading into this Christmas season. Maybe you have lost somebody. And this might be your first Christmas where you're going to be trying to go through it without them. 
Or maybe, you know, heading into this Christmas season and you've maybe lost your job or you've lost some sort of income and so you're heading into it not really knowing what exactly it's going to look like this season. Or maybe this year you lost a relationship. You know, maybe, maybe you, you had a relationship with somebody and then it, for whatever reason it kind of got broken. And so this is a Christmas where you might not have that relationship anymore. Or maybe, you know, grief can also come from a loss of a dream or a desire. Maybe you've had this dream for so long and then all of a sudden it got taken away and you now think, wow, now, now what? You know, what is my future going to look like? Or grief can come when we have changes in our health, right? Maybe we get a diagnosis that we weren't expecting. And grief can come when we don't know what the future is going to look like. And that's oftentimes where grief comes from is when we're uncertain about how we can actually move forward. That's part of the grief process. And it might also be from changing, a change in your life. Maybe this is moving to a new city or finding a new job or f- finding a new home. Like all these things can bring grief into our lives. And I think some of us are heading into this Christmas and this is our story. You know, grief is really a big part of what we're trying to do. And we feel this pull to sometimes not even celebrate Jesus or celebrate Christmas because we're so distraught and grief is coming in and trying to steal the joy that Christmas brings, the joy that Jesus brings. That's what we wanna talk about today and I wanna just quickly go through a few of the symptoms that you might be experiencing grief because sometimes you don't even realize it when it's happening and some of the symptoms are increased irritability or numbness or bitterness or detachment, or you're preoccupied with loss, or you have the inability to show or experience joy. Some of the symptoms of, of grief, and maybe you're seeing some of these patterns or these things, these symptoms in your life right now, and you don't really know what it's gonna look like going forward. And in the Christmas story, it's this really exciting story, but if you read it, there's a lot in that story that is like not super happy, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like Jesus obviously being born, that's the joy of it. But the process to get there and the process leading afterwards, there was a lot of things that that went on that were really challenging, especially for Mary and Joseph, right? You know, when Mary finds out, you know, she's pregnant, she has to go tell Joseph this part of her story. I can imagine, you know, she's, she's in this moment where she's like, how do I tell my fiance, how do I tell him I'm pregnant? You're not the dad and God's the dad. That's a thing that she had to process through that maybe was bringing grief. She was prepared to lose him to make this story happen. And even Joseph, right, he was prepared, prepared to leave Mary quietly. If we read through the story, it says he didn't want he, he to, 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 to her to, like, get in trouble or whatever. So he's like, I'm going to leave her quietly so that way she doesn't actually get the punishment that she is supposed to get because of adultery. And then they had an uncomfortable, unplanned journey to Bethlehem, right? So they have to go, and she's pregnant, and they're on this donkey, and they're just going to Bethlehem. A lot of things that, that came up and, you know, they, they also had to flee. They had to run away from home to go to Egypt to make sure that Jesus was safe. They had to give up their, their livelihood. They had to run away to make sure that Jesus could be safe. And, you know, they had probably lost a lot of their closest connections and friends as they left to Egypt. And I'm going to spend the next few moments together exploring the things Mary and Joseph did as grief came into their story. How did they cope? How did they respond to this grief. And number one is that Mary found comfort. As we, you know, com- uh, blessed are those who mourn, why? For they will be comforted. Mary found this comfort. Again, imagine with me, you're in Mary's shoes in that moment, right? An angel shows up unexpectedly and you're like, she, they're like, you're pregnant and it's gonna be Jesus and like, he's the son of God. And like, you have to carry the weight of carrying God. Like, the pressure, right? Like, I've never been pregnant. I don't plan on ever being pregnant, okay? Beth, my wife, is pregnant. First of all, the burden, like, the burden, or, like, not the burden, but, like, the, the joy, but, like, it's, it's, it's sometimes painful, okay? And those of you who have been pregnant, you're like, I know the feeling, right? Like, I don't. But not only is she pregnant, she's pregnant because God said, I'm going to save the world through you. I'm going to make Jesus come through you, the weight of that. 
And then again, the weight of saying, you might lose everything because of what, is called you to, what God has called you to do. You know, she, she was prepared to lose it all. She was prepared to lose her fiance. She was prepared to lose everything. Why? Because God called her. And sometimes God calls us and the journey to get there might not be that exciting. It might be painful. Some of the things that we go through in life are so challenging. They're so hard. And I'm not saying God causes these things to happen, but I'm saying they can be so hard to overcome grief. It can be so challenging, but Mary found comfort. She found comfort in Jesus and in God and in Luke 1 verse 37. This is when the angel has come to her and he says this, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Again, her life changed right in this moment. And her response to you're, you're going to carry Jesus is, I am a servant of the Lord. She's saying that I'm going to find comfort knowing that you've called me according to your purpose. I'm going to go forward even though it's hard, even though it's challenging. I'm going to be a part of bringing joy into the world. Joy to the world. Why? Because I know you've called me for something so big that, I'm, that we can overcome. We can go through the hardest moments because we know that we can be comforted by Jesus. And Mary had to figure this out. It wasn't easy. I'm sure there is grief that came. There's grief that maybe even tried to persuade her to do something different or to change things up. But the assignment that God had given her was enough to strengthen her and give her courage to face whatever would be waiting for her as she continued this journey. You know, if, if you're going through something really hard, especially during the Christmas season, don't try and do it on your own. Don't try and find the strength on your own. Turn to Jesus. You know, Jesus is the savior of the world. He's the comforter. Like, like he will come and he'll be there for you because he loves you. I know what you're going through might seem like a lot, and it probably is. We all have things that we're going through. We all have things that we're grieving. We all have things that we've lost. I really want to encourage you, keep your eyes focused on Jesus Focus on realizing he will comfort you. Because what happens is grief, when it comes, it tends to cloud our minds, right? You know, for a lot of us, we, it's like almost just like this, this like darkness comes and we, we don't even, we can, we can barely even see like one minute ahead, let alone in, you know, weeks or months. It kind of clouds our judgment. And this is exactly kind of what Mary asked, right? She says in, in Luke 1 verse 34, and Mary said to the angel, how will this be? Is this even possible? I'm a virgin, right? Like, 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 it's not possible for me to be pregnant yet. And some of us, we look into our future and we see, we see the things and we see the loss. We're like, I don't know if I can go forward because of how hard it is right now. I don't know if I can actually do this. And God's saying, no, I can do all things. It might be hard, but God said, I'm going to give you the strength. I'm going to give you the courage. I'm going to comfort you so that way you can overcome. So that way you can actually move forward. So that you can continue to create something beautiful in the future, right? She's saying, this is impossible. And then it goes right into that later. It says, no, all things are possible. And she said, I am your servant, so I will go and I will do exactly what you have called me to do. You know, what grief does is it tries to trick us into thinking that God can't do what we need. It tricks us into thinking we're so alone. It tricks us into telling us that we can't go forward. It's not possible. It tries to trick us and tell us that, again, he won't be there for us. We feel it's impossible to sometimes even get out of bed because we feel like we can't move forward. And some of the questions you might have is, you know, what am I going to do this Christmas? I, I just got laid off. I, you know, I won't be able to get presents for my children. You know, I don't know if I'll have maybe even food on the table this, this Christmas, the food that I want to be able to feed my family. You, know, you might be saying, no, I'm going to be so alone this Christmas, or I, I'm not going to be able to do the things that I wish I could do because it's so challenging. And those are the questions we're asking. 
This is what Mary was asking. Is it even possible? Can I actually do this? Can I move forward? But we serve the, uh, the God of the impossible. You know, God will always, if he calls you, he will always give you the strength that you need. If he calls you to do something, if he calls you to even overcome something in your life, he will give you the resources and the courage to actually be able to overcome. He will. In Jeremiah uh, 32 verse 17, right, it says this. Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. I know a lot of us were heading into this season and we don't know. Again, we're so uncertain about the future. There's a lot of fear of what it's going to look like, what the new year is going to look like. But I want to encourage you that there's nothing too hard for God. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who brought Jesus to the world in an impossible way at an uncertain time, right? In a probably not the most beautiful place to bring healing and salvation and beauty into our world. We serve the God of the impossible. You know, Mary's courage didn't come from her own strength because she didn't have the courage, you know. But it came from the strength of the God she served and the promises that he spoke. He he said, this is going to happen and we're going to bring Jesus into the world. And yes, it might be hard, but we're going to make this happen. We're going to use you to be a part of the story. And the promises that, that God spoke through the angel carried her the courage and gave her the comfort and courage she needed to actually follow through with what God had called her to do. He will give you the courage to face your grief head on this Christmas. I truly believe it. He'll give you the strength and the protection to experience his comfort and his peace in the midst of chaos. The ability to be comfort even though grief is present. You know, comfort We'll go to our takeaway, actually. Yeah, this is the takeaway for this. Is comfort isn't the absence of grief. It's having courage because you know you aren't facing it alone. I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you've lost something and you have somebody beside you. No longer are you grieving alone. You're grieving, grieving together. But you're, you're grieving together. I think grief tries to isolate us. And we think that comfort's going to come and all of a sudden... You know, we're gonna, everything's going to be all better and we're going to feel all better. Sometimes they coexist in the same space. In the middle of absolute turmoil, we can find the comfort that Jesus brings because we're no longer facing it alone. Do not try and overcome grief by yourself. You know, Mary found comfort in this moment. And then we go to number two is that Joseph had trust. Right? You know, we don't, we're not totally sure when Joseph found out, you know, Mary was pregnant. We don't know the fullness of it. Um, there's a lot of, like, debate on, on whether he knew right away or if it took some time for him to find out. But the one piece of, of, of information that we, we have is that when Mary found out, it says she went to Elizabeth. And she went there, and she was pregnant, and they kind of hung out. And then in verse, uh, Luke, uh, Luke 1, verse 56, this is what it says. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. And this is the end of Luke. And then if we go to Luke chapter 2, that's when we get the classic Christmas story, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20. And so, you know, it may be that Joseph only found out his wife was pregnant, or his fiance was pregnant, three months after she got pregnant. So imagine Joseph, right? You're, you're working on your home. You're getting ready for your, you know, you, you, you're building your house. You're getting ready for the wedding night. You know, be like, he's getting ready, right? And all of a sudden, she shows up three months pregnant. <laughs> he was probably pretty mad, right? Like, pretty angry. Like, I would assume, like, he wasn't, like, super pumped about this moment. And what do you do? Like, what do you do when something hits you face on that causes you to feel so much anxiety and grief in a moment? What do you do? Joseph was prepared to leave her quietly. You know, I think a lot of the time when grief comes, you know what we try and do? We try and run away. We try to ignore it. 
We try and pretend that everything's going to be okay. We try and pretend that we got the strength. We try and pretend that, that, that it's, not, it's, not, it's not hard. We just try and pretend that it's not there. And, and, and Joseph has this moment where he's about to just leave her quietly because he doesn't understand yet. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the fullness of what's going on yet. Right? And then an angel came. and You know, Matthew 124, this is right after the angel has shown up and told Joseph, hey, take her as your wife. This is Jesus. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be able to do it, right? Matthew 1, 24 to 25. When Joseph woke up from his nap, he trusted so much, and he, so he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until the day she had given birth to a son, and he called him Jesus. You know, Joseph, he, again, he was prepared to leave her. He was prepared to start a new life. He was prepared to just give it up. And then an angel came and spoke and said, no, you can do this. And he trusted that voice. He trusted God so much that he was willing to put everything on the line for his calling. Again, similar to what happened to Mary, right? Willing to go forward. You know, again, I think Joseph was probably grieving what he thought his future was going to look like. But he trusted God so much that he kept going forward. He trusted God so much that he made a decision that I think a lot of people, including me, would struggle to make. Right? When what we, what's in front of us is not what we expected. We have an opportunity to leave. We have an opportunity to quit. We have an opportunity to run away. A lot of us, we take that path. We, we do what we can to try and just ignore it or to try and even not just ignore grief, but we try and to avoid it. We don't want to put ourselves in situations where grief's going to be a part of it. We don't want to put ourselves in moments where it might be hard. And I want to encourage you, with grief, we have to face it head on and trust that God knows what he's doing. Trust that, that God's going to take care of us. We have to learn to trust that God's going to comfort us. We have to trust that he's going to be there. We have to trust that he's going to give us what we need. We have to trust him enough to give up control. When it comes to, to grief in our lives, we try and control everything. And then when we realize we don't have control anymore, we fall apart. And it's easier for us if we can give God, give Jesus the control earlier. It'll really help us as we go forward. Joseph trusted God so much that he was willing to put everything on the line. The question is, do you trust God to lead you through your grief this Christmas? Do you trust him to protect you? Do you trust him to comfort you this Christmas? Do you trust that joy can be present even in the midst of turmoil? Do you trust that he's the prince of peace? Do you trust him to take care of you this year, this Christmas? Do you trust him? You know, I think a lot of us, our earthly fathers failed us. And I think a lot of us, our, our earthly fathers didn't treat us the way that they should have. And so when we look to God, our father, what we do is we think he's going to do the same. We think that, that God, our father, is just going to be there and he's just going to not be present. We feel like if we go to him, he's just going to tell us to smarten up and Figure it out, right? But that's not the God we serve. He comforts us. He'll be there for you in your hardest moment. He won't leave you and he won't forsake you. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will be there for you. We need to realize that God is trustworthy. <laughs> we have to. And it's hard. I'm telling you, sometimes it's so hard. Because I think for some of us, what we're facing this Christmas, and I don't know everyone's story fully, but I think for a lot of us, what you're facing this Christmas, you're not even sure you're going to make it out. God will be there for you. I promise you. You're not alone, ever. He will take care of you. You know, grief, sometimes it becomes easier when we realize we can't control the outcomes. All we can control is where we put our energy, 
And let's put our energy in Jesus. Let's put our energy in our families. You know, we try our hardest, and maybe you're different than me, but I try my hardest to do it all on my own. I try and lead my family all by myself sometimes. I try and, you know, do it all on my own strength, on my own dime, and then I get to the end, and I'm so burnt out, I'm so exhausted, and grief is still there because I never dealt with it. I just kind of tried to weasel my way around it. That I'm now, I'm just exhausted. I want to encourage you, let's find rest this Christmas. Give up control. And let God embrace you. Let him love you. Let him take care of you. He loves you. Trust him to take care of you. You know, our takeaway for, for, for thought number two here is this. Is trusting God with our future means giving up control. We can't control. We can't predict. We try, right? You ever had a prediction of like what you thought was going to happen? You're like, in my five-year goal is this. And then five years later, you're like, wow, I live in a different country than I thought. You know what I'm talking about? We can't, we can't fully predict what's going to happen. And, and then the third thought that I have when it comes to how Mary and Joseph kind of worked with grief is this, is that Mary treasured the moments. And in Luke 2 verse 19, this is what it says. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And you have to remember the adventure that this family was about to head on, right? This, this adventure, this, this thing that wasn't planned, they were about to run away and flee to Egypt because Herod was preparing to kill every single child under two years old. I think that's a part of the story we don't, you know, focus on because it's not super exciting, right? You know, Mary was pondering these things in her heart, treasured up all these things as she was about to go run away so that she could make sure Jesus was safe. You know, they, the angel shows up and says, hey, you got to leave. It's not safe. So they have to flee. They have to go away from what they know and they go to Egypt. As Herod starts killing all the, the you know, babies, male babies. I think, again, there's a lot of things that we go through that's really hard. But what we have to do is we have to treasure the greatest moments in our hearts. Treasure the moments that you look back on and you reflect on and you say, wow, thank you. The moments you had with, you know, the family member that maybe you lost that were beautiful and amazing to look back and remember the most beautiful moments and treasure them in your heart. You know, oftentimes when it comes to grief, what happens is as soon as we have loss, our minds get filled with regret. At least for me. Filled with regret. The moments of animosity and pain in relationship the mistakes that I made and the things I said that I shouldn't have said and the ways I responded that I shouldn't have responded. When I've lost something, you know, how, how I treated or how I, my work ethic, whatever it was, when you lost, we look back and we're filled with regret. What I should have said, what I should have done. And regret, it's kind of taken over. And what this does is it leaves this taste in our mouths, a sour taste of the horrible, hardest moments. But we have to look back and treasure the most beautiful moments, the moments that we have in our minds for the rest of our lives. You know what the word ponder means? It means this. You see, it means to think about something carefully especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. So we ponder the good moments before you make a decision in the hard moments. So many times we make decisions in our hardest moments 
in our weakest moments without even having uh, the mind to ponder the most beautiful moments. In every relationship, in every workplace, in every place, there's going to be hard times. There's going to be hard moments. Because grief, right, it's powerful. It's hard, it's powerful. It shapes us, it builds us. But we have to choose to either let grief lead us to regret or lead us to purpose. If we spend all our energy regretting, we're never going to move forward. We're never going to move forward if grief constantly leads us to regret. Yes, there's probably things you shouldn't have said. There's probably things I shouldn't have said. Things I shouldn't have done. But let's let grief lead us to purpose. Let us let grief help us grow and get better and love better and have more compassion and take care of each other. Let us, let us be together as a family. Let us take care of each other. Yes, it's going to be hard. But let's have the hard moments not alone. You want to find comfort? Let somebody know what you're going through. You know, I was talking to somebody this week. I said, you know, I'm, I'm too stubborn to quit and I'm too prideful to ask for help, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's like, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to die trying, you know what I mean? Like, we need to allow other people into our stories. We need to allow other people into the things that we're going through. And, you know, our takeaway is up there right now. Let grief lead you to purpose rather than regret. Let's go and lead into purpose. You know, with Mary and Joseph, so many hard moments. Mary treasures the most beautiful moments in her heart and, you know, goes forward and leads. And they, the journey was crazy. In fact, when Jesus was about 12 years old, they lost him for a few days. Like, I don't know if you've ever, like, lost your own child, but imagine losing Jesus, you know what I mean? It's like, what's going to happen, you know what I mean? Like, is fire going to come? Like, I might just, you know, like. But let's let purpose be the response to our grief. That yes, it's going to be hard. Let's find purpose in realizing we're a family. I know as a church, we're not just, we don't just come here to sit in a, in a chair on Sunday and leave. We sit here because we're broken people who need each other. We're people who just need each other. We need relationship. We need one another. We need it. We can't go forward by ourselves. You know, our church is called Known Victory Church, right? Recently, we kind of rebranded. We changed to Known Victory Church. Why we did this is we, be, we believe that in order for us to really be even the best version of ourselves, we need to realize that people need to know who we actually are to be honest and transparent and vulnerable in our hardest things and the things that we go through. And the longer I'm alive, the more I realize there's a lot of pain in our world. A lot. You know, this past Sunday, uh, this past Wednesday, I was watching the funeral of a pastor who had passed away from cancer in our country, Leon Fontaine, if you know Pastor Leon Fontaine. I was watching his funeral this this past Wednesday. Pastor of Springs Church and, you know, CEO of the, the Miracle Channel. And I'm seeing everything happening. There's so many things that, are, that cause us so much grief in our lives. And today I want to share something a little vulnerable with, with you that Beth and I have been facing as we've been leading our church through, you know, COVID and transition and all these things. I want to share just quickly. You know, there's, there's been a lot of um, aftermath from, from COVID that, that we're not really talking about. You know, even this week I was talking to, to um, two of my friends who work in nonprofits and nonprofits right now are really, really struggling. You know, I, I know one nonprofit that I really love and they've had to just, just this week had to let go of four people. 
just before, you know, Christmas. And, you know, Beth and I in our church, right, we've had to make some, some hard decisions when it comes to finances over this, you know, two years, and which we continue to do. We have to, make, we have to make these decisions, right? We have to, you know, lead our church to the best of our abilities. And we've had to deal with some of these, the things that inflation is bringing and things like that. And this for us is included, you know, postponing, you know, paychecks to make sure that we can make sure that, that the gospel is being spread. We've, we've made these decisions. I'm not saying this to like, look at me. Like, I'm just telling you, this is where we're at. We've had to do this and it's been a stretching season for us. It's been a stretching season. It's been a growing season. It's been a humbling season. Again, I had these friends that, 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 that nonprofits are looking at, you know, some of them are looking at getting into programs because they can't afford to keep going the way that, that they were before. And it's been hard for so many, not just nonprofits, but businesses. Like right now in Canada, like inflation, all of it, there's a lot of happening. A lot of loss for a lot of people. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to like, to, to scare you. I'm not saying this. I'm just telling you that even for all of us, you know, keep each other in your prayers. Why? Because we don't know the fullness of what's happening unless we tell each other. Unless we share the fullness of what's going on, you're going to be so desperately alone grieving by yourself. That is one of the worst places to be because you can only find comfort in community. You don't find comfort in community. And I'm telling you, I'm confident that God is building his church here in Canada. I'm confident. I'm not scared. I'm not, you know, God is building his church. And we can see this right in Matthew 16, 18. This is what it says. And I tell you, this is Peter. You are Peter. And this is right after Peter says, you are the son of God. He says, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. God is building his church in Edmonton. God is building his church and nothing can stop it. Not the economy. Not the government, not a pandemic. We made it through one already. Nothing can stop God from building his church. And we have, I have the faith and courage that God is going to do what he said he will do. And God is building the church. You know who the church is? We are. I'm telling you, yes, it's hard. But you are not alone. You are not alone. And I think sometimes we feel alone. Have you ever been in a space surrounded by people, but you feel desperately alone? You know what I'm talking about? You're in a space filled. It's people everywhere. But you feel so desperately alone. And I think the reason why is because people don't know your name and they don't know your story. In order for us to truly become known, we have to share our name and we have to share our story. Now, I'm saying all this to, 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 to tell you today. Oh, lost it. There we go, found it. I'm saying all this to tell you today. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to come in and be like, just before Christmas, be like, everything sucks, right? Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do that. But I tell you all this to say, be patient with people this Christmas. You know, my pe people might be struggling under the surface and you don't even know. Be loving to people this Christmas. We're all facing things, right? Some of us are heading into the first Christmas without a loved one and nobody even knows. You know, some of us were still dealing with trauma from our past around Christmas time and it's, this time of year can be really hard for so many people. You know, some of us are heading into this Christmas not knowing if we're going to be able to get presents for our children. You know, some of us were preparing for a lonely Christmas because we don't have anyone to eat a meal with. You know, some of us were heading into this Christmas with the diagnosis looming over our head and we have to go for tests in January and we don't know what it's going to look like. Be loving, be patient, and do not compare your grief to somebody else's. Don't be like Herod. He let his grief and his comparison, right? He found out Jesus was gonna be the king. He's like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make this not happen. And it led to something so horrific. And let compassion lead you to love 
and not comparison lead you to hate this Christmas. Let's love one another. Let's have compassion on one another. Let's be generous this Christmas. Let's take care of each other this Christmas. Let's be a family this Christmas because we need it. We need each other. God is building his church and I want to encourage you that people can't really be there for you if you don't tell them your story. And we can overcome deep despair and deep grief together when people know our story, when people know what we need, when people can be a shoulder to cry on or a person to pray with you. I want to encourage us all to just stand. I want to read what Jesus said here. I'm going to invite our worship team up too, but what Jesus said here in John 14, 27. This is what he said. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, the world offers us peace, right? It does. But it's so synthetic and it's so temporary. It's not real. It might look like a bonus coming in, right? Which is amazing, like beautiful. That's so cool. But that's so temporary. Let his peace that passes all understanding be the rock that you stand on this Christmas. Let peace come. No, we need to realize that when heaven came, Jesus came and hope came and peace came and joy came. That's the promise of Jesus. Heaven will meet you in your grief. Heaven will meet you in your despair. Heaven will meet you in your lack. <clears throat> yes, things might be hard, but I'm telling you, we have something so big to put our hope in and to find peace in that does not, does not end. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's Jesus, the Prince of Peace. So let's just pray together. God, I thank you that you meet us in our grief. God, I thank you that you take care of us. God, I thank you that, that you are joy, that you are peace, that you are love. And God, I pray that this Christmas, we do not let grief steal it, but we let grief lead us to a place where we can have compassion on one another. We can have love for one another. God, I thank you that you are moving, you are loving, and that heaven is here. In Jesus' name.